We've got a very innovative and forward-thinking chairman here and it's been going on in his mind for quite some time. And I think just being a market leader about understanding how to get best use out of the pitch, not just for for the team within training and playing, but also for the community, how we can aid the community and also how we can actually increase our revenues to keep us a really sustainable business. I played on grass all my life and I had plenty of injuries. And I know there's plenty of injuries concerned with training venues in grass. And so yeah, there'll be there'll be highlighted stuff, but and I'm I'm hopeful that we never get any injuries on it. But that's very doubtful. But what we've got to do is we've got to take that on the board and realise that yeah, there are some things that we need to do on it to practice and to work on it. But this has got plenty of research behind it. The surfaces has been passed by lots of governing bodies. And I think it's it's a consistent surface which takes away injuries. There might be some things that we talk about impact, but those are the kind of things you talk about with players all the time when they're coming back from injuries and when they've already got injuries. But this is a consistent, great surface that's, that's made for contact sport. Something different always provokes a little bit of scepticism and I think that's what we might see a little bit. But it's, it's a great surface to play in. And a lot of, a lot of clubs through their off-seasons and through their, their periods when they can't get on grass will be using these kind of pitches. I know that Lee this year probably had a two, three month jump on everybody because they already had it in place down at the Lee Sports Village. So that they're, they're, already, they're already using it and practice on it. It's aided them throughout this year. So we do, what we're doing is we're just, we're maybe getting one step ahead of the, the, the marketplace and also showing that we're showing a lot of initiative here and the chairman's really forward thinking. I, I think uh, we were pushing at an open door. I think the Rugby League were already looking at ways that they would, uh, they would deal with uh, artificial grass going forward. Um, and perhaps we've been a little bit of a catalyst to move that on faster than it would have done. But, uh, but not in general. I think, I think there's a sense that it's a, it's a positive move. It's about improving the sustainability of the clubs. And I think, um, I think you know, we'd like the opportunity to demonstrate that it will add value in that sense. The coaches are keen that they get onto it earlier on in the pre-season, that we won't lose as much time. There's a, you know, there's a, there's a lot of arguments for what, the, for what it would do for the rugby club. But actually, for the borough and for the community, how this pitch and how the stadium will engage with the community will be completely different. You know, We can host very many more events here and it isn't just a rugby league stadium anymore. It's very much you know, an inclusive community facility. We'd like to see many, many different sports play. We've, we've seen older generations of turf where they become very hard, um, things like the old football pitches at Oldham and QPR, um, and then more lately onto generations of turf, as we can see on the, the perimeter now, uh, where the fibre technology was, is quite dated now. We've, we've increased um, and put a lot of development into fibre technology in terms of artificial turf, so it's a lot softer, um, the look and feel is a lot better uh, to players and obviously um, to spectators. Um, and then the way we've changed, obviously, the infill in terms of, of using more SBR rubber rather than just sand, um, so there's more shock absorption and a better performance layer for playing sports such as rugby league. I think every club looks to gain a, an advantage in whichever way it can and I think the fact that we will know our own pitch and we'll be training on it and playing on it, I hope it gives us an advantage. But I think in general, the other Super League clubs, if they can see that this is a way of helping revenue streams and helping the sustainability of their business, uh, their business plans, I think they, they, they keep a watchful eye and I don't think we'll be the last Super League club that, that has an artificial surface. Is there a chance of taking a bit of a romance out of playing at the Stobart without the, sort of the grass and the mud? I don't know, is that the romance? Is that what we're looking for? I think we might be introducing some other elements and I think the opportunities outweigh the threats. You know, it's a, it's a, it was an accidental byproduct that the shirts will remain clean. That will be a, you know, that's good news for our sponsors. Our sponsors like to think that, you know, that the game has moved on. You know, all seater stadia, you know, that uh, that made a, you know, a big difference in sport. But it's not necessarily, a, you know, a retrograde step. Uh, a retrograde step. I think that uh, sport in general, you know, is, is is looking for innovation and looking for uh, for ways that it can continually improve. And I think that uh, it, this is a sporting facility. It's a community facility. And if it were just a rugby stadium, I think it's much more difficult to sustain.